Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to Christmas in July on every version ever. All month we're looking at versions of the Nutcracker, and today we're doing the Hip Hop Nutcracker. This is another episode we made last year. After I did the Nutcracker in the Four Realms with Nikki and Katie, we saw that Disney Plus was releasing another Nutcracker film, though this time it was basically just a TV special, the Hip Hop Nutcracker. So we decided to do that at Christmas last year. And after we made that episode, the wheels in my head got turning. My friend Jenna had suggested a different Nutcracker movie ages ago as a possible podcast. So I decided that Christmas in July would be the perfect time to do a series on the Nutcracker for every version ever, which is how we got here. One thing I should mention before we start is that not long after we recorded this episode, Stephen Boss, the dancer who played Maria Clara's father, passed away. He was a great dancer, and we spent a while talking about him and his wife as a duo, so I figured I should mention that up front first, since we talked about them in the present tense. I should also mention, as you'll notice when we get into this, Nikki ended up having a conflict the day we recorded, so she couldn't make it, but she sent us in a review to include in the episode. Katie and I ended up doing this episode on our own, but it was surprisingly fun, and I don't know how much we were expecting that. So before we start, let's just talk about our first reactions to it. What did you think when you first started watching it? Because I had no idea what what to expect going in. Yeah, I like was like, oh, it's only 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I thought too. it was going to be longer. Um, but then when it like started, I was like, OK, we get like this setup with the you know, narrator. And I was like, that's good. But then like the text on screen and I was like, why do I need this too? Uh huh. But then, like, when, like, ignoring the text on screen, because, like, it was, like, the story's telling me this, but, like, I fully enjoyed myself with the actual, like, movie. The text on screen, I didn't care for, but I, like, really enjoyed the dancing and the music and everything. I think I feel pretty much exactly the same way, except I didn't need any sort of narrator. <laughs> Like yeah, even, I think even the rapping, I, 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 it made me feel the same way I feel about Fantasia 2000. I did not need the celebrity intros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't mind the rapper. Like he wasn't necessary because the story told itself enough through visuals. But like, I mm -hmm. didn't mind him. He he kind of went in and out. Like at first, it was like, oh no, this is cheesy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he he did get a little bit better i liked his scene in the the land of sweets <laughs> i like yeah. that part the best with him and that the the rapper is joseph simmons he actually was part of run dmc and he's like apparently oh. like a hip-hop icon so he really was the celebrity introduction <laughs> <laughs> yeah the text on screen kind of like i was like go away I was watching a movie. I don't want to read a... It kind of was like when you... Have you ever gotten one of those where it's like a children's book adaptation of a movie? And like it has screenshots of the book from the movie and it like has text written on it. That's like what it mm. made me think of. Yeah, none of none of the introductions or text or anything was really necessary. I would have absolutely loved this if it was just music, just dancing, no narration, no explanation, just give me the ballet, but hip hop. And yeah. for the most part, I really liked it. I do think that the intro, the narration and the text on screen did bring bring it down a bit, but not enough to where I was like, I, I don't like this. I still loved it. I will watch it again. I watched, I've watched it like four times already. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because I needed to write notes and I was actually trying to go through this thing and match up the songs with the actual ballet to try and figure out what was what. Nice. So that's why I watched it so many times. <laughs> but I would have watched it more than once anyways. And I'll probably watch it again. I, I think my cousin would like this. So I'll probably watch it with her too. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it'd be fun to like turn on every once in a while and just like mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of fun. It'd be a nice background thing to put on like at a Christmas party or something. Yeah. But one thing that I didn't know is that this is not unique to Disney Plus. I thought this was like a new Disney Plus thing that Disney Plus made up. Apparently, this is like the 10th anniversary of a stage show. 
Like yeah. the Hip Hop Nutcracker has been running as a stage show for the last 10 years, and I've never heard of it before. Yeah, I I think they like mentioned that up in the description or something, but I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, I had no idea. But it, it, it's a good idea, though, because I've always loved, like I grew up with classical music, mm-hmm. but I've always loved fusing classical music with modern music, and I think this yeah. does it really well. Oh, yeah. Plus the dancing takes it to the next level. Yes. I feel like the play is probably a bit better because you don't have the text. Mm. I'm going to assume the play is probably more you just watch it as opposed to the text. I think it's also like twice as long, too. So I think the one on Disney Plus is abridged from whatever the stage show is. Aw. Yeah. when When I saw the length of it elsewhere, I was like... I mean, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked it if it was a lot longer. Yeah, they, I feel like if it was more like how they did Hamilton. On, That's uh, kind of what I thought, because I, I found out it was a stage show before I started watching it. And then I was thinking, oh, so it, did they just film the stage show? But no, they they filmed it specifically for Disney Plus. So it wasn't like they brought cameras to an actual theater. Mm-hmm. But I think they could have, and I think it would have been great if they'd done that. Yeah. Well, before we get into it, I had originally wanted Nikki to join us because she had done the other Nutcracker with us, and it didn't work out, but she did send a review. So I'm going to play that for us so that we can... I haven't listened to it yet. I figured I'd just wait and listen to it when we're recording. All right, so thoughts on the Hip Hop Nutcracker without going into an intense amount of tangents. This may be a real challenge, but I will do what I can. So this thing from the start is only 45 minutes long, so it already has uh, quite an advantage or a disadvantage in storytelling depending upon how you consider length of a feature compared to Nutcracker in the Four Realms. It does use those 45 minutes in a way that makes a ton of sense and is much more true to the original ballet for obvious reasons. Most of its storytelling is told through dance. Um, There is a narrator in the form of the famous Run DMC uh, artist, but it does um, do most of what it needs to do through the art of dance, and that is probably one of the strongest things that the Nutcracker offers. It's amazing dance. Just the moves that it pulls out over the course of those 45 minutes, the artistry that combines ballet and um, hip hop in so many unique ways. And it's just like the Rat King. He just moved in such incredible ways. It was a joy to watch from that perspective. As for the rest, I am unfortunately not as well versed in the actual ballet as I am in the the traditional story of the Nutcracker. So I can't really comment on how um, the story relates in the hip hop Nutcracker compared to the Nutcracker Ballet. But the what I can, I guess, comment on is the quality of the music, especially where you do a uh, fusion of classic and hip hop was absolutely incredible. I love when they take like a classic score and add rock or hip hop elements to it. It's it elevates it in a different way, but it still pays homage to what the base is. I think they did an incredible job with this. So I guess in closing I would definitely say that the hip hop version of the Nutcracker is miles above what Nutcracker in the Four Realms was, more so because it didn't add um unnecessary stuff to the story. It took what was there and it gave it a spin. Like you should, you know, no thing should. If you can take the original text and add to it in a way that enriches the experience without adding a whole bunch of extra fluff that doesn't really do anything for the story, it's always going to be the best version of it, in my opinion. And this one did it right. It added the elements that was needed. It gave a cohesive story. It dazzled visually. I mean, the sets and the dance and all of it was just incredible. You know, the people that that played the different roles they uh, they showed through their faces and you got the emotional sense of what they were going for so yeah it was a really quality version yeah i pretty much agree there's yeah th- there's so much in this that's just it's just so fun to watch 
right? Like I was watching it and my sister was in the room and she wasn't watching. She was working on other things. I just kept calling her like, look at this, look at this. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, and we'll get there. She specifically mentioned the Rat King and my, uh, like my jaw dropped. I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll start with the main cast. And I didn't recognize too many people, but there were a few people I did recognize. The main character is Maria Clara, who is played by Cash or Cache Melvin. I'm not sure how you pronounce the first name. And her parents are played by Allison Holker and Stephen Boss. And I didn't realize, but they're actually married in real life, which oh. I thought was cool. <laughs> And the dad, Stephen Boss, I thought I recognized him. So I started looking around. He was Ellen's DJ. Oh. So that's why I recognized him. That's funny. So when this starts, at first I was like, oh, no, is this going to be awkward? <laughs> because I wasn't really into the rapping. Mm -hmm. But I did like the dancing. And I would say that the first... The opening street dance is probably the weakest one. It definitely got kept getting better and better and better. This it was good, but combined with the rapping, I was still a little bit skeptical. But in further watches, I've warmed up to it. I really like the, the opening dance. And the music is the march from the beginning of the Nutcracker. Like the, the music is pretty much in order. There's a few things out of order. But from what I can tell, I'm I'm not a Nutcracker expert. I had to do a lot more research than I thought I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty much in order. And this is the march that's one of the first songs in the actual ballet. And you get, I guess he's called the Neighborhood MC. I think that's what he's credited as, the guy from Run DMC. Uh -huh. He basically says that Maria Clara's parents are, I guess, having issues. It, it's not really explained very well. Because it's, I mean, it's kind of unnecessary to explain <laughs> all this stuff. But the whole point of this is she just wants her parents to stop fighting, I guess. They won't so, dance together. Yes, yes. The, she wants them to dance and they're supposed to kiss by midnight, I guess. Like before New Year's Eve. Because this takes place on New Year's Eve. So after the big opening March dance... She puts on her headphones to tune everything out, and you have Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. And it's a, it's a, I mean, it's already a quiet song, but I really liked how they did this one, having everything just kind of disappear. Yeah. And her dancing by herself. Yeah, it's really good. And then you're introduced to Drosselmeyer, who in this version is a gender swap version. So this one is played by Comfort Fidoki. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the last name right on that. She looked familiar, but I'm not sure if I've seen her in anything. I love Dazzle Yes, she was amazing. The, the costume was great. The dancing was great. She was just, she was so cool. Right. And I believe when Drosselmeyer is introduced, I think this is the song in the ballet, The Arrival of Mr. Drosselmeyer and Distribution of the Presence, which makes sense for what is happening here. Mm -hmm. Because you have Drosselmeyer in this version has a toy store, and she brings three of the toys to life. There's a marionette doll, and I believe it's a ballerina on a music box, and then a jack-in-the-box. Yeah. And I, I actually recognized one of these dancers. I'm not 100% sure if this is the correct pronunciation. There's so many people. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing their names correctly. But I recognize this dancer. I think you pronounce her name Yaya Vankova. Mm -hmm. I think she's either Russian or Eastern European somewhere. She is a dancer who does like extremely intricate like robot moves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And she's perfect for this marionette doll thing. She, like, there's, I think the reason that I know who she is, because a while back there was this video that was going viral, that I think people were confused and thought it was an actual robot, <laughs> but it was her dancing. <laughs> she's she's amazing. Like, just go search her name. Her name is spelled J-A-J-A-V-A-N-K-O-V-A. -A -A. Just do a Google search and watch some of her videos. She's awesome she has she, she has such a unique move set i guess she, mm -hmm. like people can do robot dances but like there's something about her she's just so good at it yeah 
And the first time I watched this, Drew, I think I was kind of multitasking and I wasn't paying enough attention. I think I was typing. Plus, I was watching on my laptop, which wasn't in like big HD. It was like a small picture. The second time I watched it, I had it on the TV in HD. I was like, wait a minute. Is that the robot dancer? <laughs> <laughs> so I went straight to IMDb, started looking through. Yes, it's definitely her. That's awesome. Yeah, it looked really, it was really good. Yeah, it is so good. And then this is where the first out of order song comes in because you have the ballerina doll on the music box dancing to the Arabian dance. And that comes later in the actual ballet, but it works for what they wanted here. Yeah. And then with the Jack in the Box character, I I am not sure what the song was. Like... I would say uh, maybe like 30% of the music in this, I was not sure what the original song from the ballet was because it was so hip hopified Mm -hmm. or they wrote their own music. I'm not sure. Maybe they like took a few notes and then went in their own direction with it. Yeah. So my guess is that this is the grandfather waltz, but that is, that is a guess. That is a wild guess, mostly because I'm pretty sure that that's what bridges the gap between this scene and the next. And I'm, I just kind of wondered if maybe they took part of that and turned it into the hip hop version and then went into the classical version afterwards. Not a hundred percent sure. That's just, that's my wild guess for this scene. Yeah. (laughs) Then you're introduced to the nutcracker and this version is a nut vendor. He has like a little (laughs) hot dog cart that still except it's nuts on the side of the street. And I'm this is another one I get a wild guess as to what the song is. I think that this could be the song Clara and the Nutcracker, but it it doesn't really sound like it at all. I just I can't for the life of me figure out exactly (laughs) what it's supposed to be. They could have just made it up for this special. I don't know. And then you have more rapping and (laughs) some of his lines i thought were just awkward it was like it was like somebody's dad in here (laughs) the one that just stood out to me was when he's trying to get the nutcracker to go after maria claire he says i'm a cool peep so i'll watch your cart (laughs) oh so so funny and then the next scene i'm pretty sure is that the music is supposed to be the battle which makes total sense. And there's parts of it where I'm sure that that's what it is, but other parts where it's like, I think they just kind of did their own thing. But you have Maria Clara falling asleep on a park bench, like in an alley or a factory or something. <laughs> just I'm like, well, sure it's, it's nighttime, time to sleep. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'm not sure why there's a park bench in a factory or wherever this is, but whatever, it's cool. And you have a violinist playing here, which I thought was cool. He's... He, He's actually a violinist, like a dancer. He only has the one credit on IMDb, but I looked him up and he was, I think he was on Broadway, Robert Green. Oh, cool. He leaves when the mice start coming out. And I thought <laughs> it was funny that they like, they pop out of a dumpster and <laughs> yeah. start sneaking out of things. <laughs> yeah, the mice are a lot of fun. Yes, yes. I love this scene. So they wake Maria Clara up, they start dancing. And then the Mouse King comes in, and he only has one leg, and the dancer is Gene Sock, and he's a professional break dancer who performed a Cirque du Soleil, and he's known for incorporating his crutches into his dancing, and he was amazing. Right. Like, like, my jaw literally dropped when he started dancing. I was like, that is so cool. Yeah, he, like, stole the show, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So then they have a dance battle, the Nutcracker and the Mouse King, and Maria Claire is dragged away by the mice. Drosselmeyer comes in and conjures up a magic storm to give the Nutcracker some magic sneakers. I wasn't sure what was happening. I was like all there for it. (laughs) (laughs) And I think the music here, if, if the other scene wasn't Clara and the Nutcracker, I'm pretty sure this was. It was also different, but this was a lot closer to what the ballet was. So I'm pretty sure that's what this music was, Clara and the Nutcracker. So then he's dancing in his new magic sneakers, 
He's joined by a bunch of soldiers, some of whom are drumming on paint buckets. And I liked the design of the paint buckets, but I was thinking the paint is dripping down from the bottoms of the buckets. So like <laughs> somebody poured, had the buckets upside down and poured paint on them to get the get it drip down the side, but that's not how the paint would be dripping <laughs> if it was real paint buckets. I was really overanalyzing that. <laughs> <laughs> so all these soldiers are dance battling the mice. And I think this is another riff on the battle. It could be another a made up number. I don't know. And then they rescue Maria Clara from the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> And she and the Nutcracker leave to have a more classical dance in a much nicer part of town. <laughs> <laughs> and this music is a pine forest in winter. And then Drosselmeyer comes in to summon the spirit of the snow, which is Mikhail Barishnikov, who is an actual ballet dancer who has done the Nutcracker in the past. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> And I'm I'm pretty sure this music is Waltz of the Snowflakes, but then it takes a turn and it's completely its own thing again, because the snow that they summon is the Jabberwockies, who are a dance troupe known for their specific masks. And I've I've loved. <laughs> Do you know the show Shake It Up? It yeah. was a Disney Channel show. Yeah. They were on an episode of that, and I had never heard of them before then, but they were, they were like one of the, my favorite things that I ever saw on that show. <laughs> <laughs> they were so cool, and I thought it was awesome that they had them on the special. Yeah, they were really fun, too. So after the Jabberwockies finish their dance, Drosselmeyer summons a time portal to take them all back to the night that Maria Clara's parents met. And this is where you get the Land of Sweets, which is a candy store slash nightclub. It was great. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> and and the neighborhood MC is back. And he says, <laughs> throw your hands up, throw your hands up. If you're back in time, throw your hands up. <laughs> and then he did have a line that I thought was great. He says, another New Year's Eve and I'm feeling terrific. Back in the day, yeah, non-specific. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in this unspecified period of time, maybe the eighties, but non-specific. <laughs> uh, this this was probably his best scene. Oh yeah, and also these this music this whole scene is probably like my favorite music of all of this, and. There was more to this than I realized on my first watch, because on my first watch, I recognized like the Chinese dance, dance of the reed flutes. But the Chinese dance is introduced as a tea party. And in yeah. the ballet, this is listed in some places as the tea scene. <laughs> <laughs> so they put more thought into it than I realized. There's also a chocolate scene and a coffee scene. But the chocolate scene that that's incorporated here like the word coffee appears on or chocolate appears on screen mm -hmm. with a dancer it it sounds similar to to that so i know that's what they're going for but the coffee dance was the arabian dance which was used for the music box dancer at the beginning ah oh, nice and then you had the dance of the reed flutes and the solo dancer is credited as reed pipes but i really liked the solo dancer i thought he did a great job yeah and then you have a big group dance, which is the Russian dance. And the featured dancer, Alex Wong, he looked familiar again, but I looked through his IMDb page and he was in a bunch of stuff that I've seen, but he didn't play a character that like he was always a dancer. So maybe his face just got stuck in my head. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see when her parents meet, it's the Waltz of the Flowers. And I really liked how they did this. It had time slowing down except for them. Yeah. And I liked the way they were interacting with the people around them. And then this leads into the last waltz, which I believe is how the show closes. It's not the last song in this version, but I think on the stage show, the last waltz is th the end, at least in what I've looked at. Like I said, I'm not a nutcracker expert. <laughs> this is just my afternoon of research. <laughs> So the MC sends them back to the future to fix her parents' marriage. I don't remember. Like, I think it's had had to do with, like, reminding them of this first dance, and that was the whole point of this. Yeah, because later the Nutcracker and uh, Maria Clara dance the dance that they did in this week. Yeah. And it, like, rejuvenates their love, I guess. 
<laughs> something like that yeah like i said i don't think any of the the actual narrative is that necessary i think it would have been fine without it but that's what they did so they go back they show them the dance they start dancing there's like this big block party happening and i'm pretty sure the music here is the piece the sugar plum fairy and her cavalier and then they kiss at the stroke of midnight and then the MC is back. He does a rap and then takes a selfie with, with the whole <laughs> party. <laughs> and that's basically the end, except there's somebody, I don't know who this is, somebody named Curtis Blow. He's apparently he's part of the stage show and he sings a song over the credits, but he's like a sort of a character. I, th I think I saw him on my rewatch. I think I saw him earlier in the special as well. So he's, I guess, another celebrity cameo. Yeah. Anyways, that's basically it. It was much shorter than I thought it was. I like. I thought this was going to be a movie when I first heard about this. I thought it was just going to be another Nutcracker movie. Yeah. I didn't realize it was a musical special. Yeah, like I expected it to be like a shorter movie, like a Disney Channel movie, yeah. kind of. I thought that's what they were going to go for, but you know, like while I would have enjoyed maybe a bit more. I mm -hmm. really enjoyed what we got, so I don't yeah. really have much complaints. <laughs> yeah, no, I I don't really either. I think I, I if it were me, I think the the length is good, but I would have replaced the narration with more dancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what we got was fine. I did enjoy this. I thought it was a fun special. I mean, like when I went into the movie. I was just like, well, as long as the Nutcracker's in it, then it's already going to be better than the <laughs> Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And he was, so yay. Yes, he was actually a main character he was in, in the special important. with his name. <laughs> Instead of just an accessory. <laughs> yes, yes. My favorite scene was when the wife was dancing and she was trying to get her husband to... Uh, dance with her and he just grabs the like hot chocolate and shoves his entire face in it and then just shrugs <laughs> at her like i'm busy <laughs> like, he's got like whipped cream all up to his eyes and you're just like, <laughs> how normal people drink <laughs> that was just so funny to me i think my favorite parts were the rat king of course of and course. then the land of sweets yeah, like all of all of those pieces were so good. It was like the perfect classical modern fusion. Yes, it was really, really good. Well, I think that's probably all I have to say about this. It's too short to like do too much more, and most mm -hmm. of it is just dancing anyway. So yeah, most of it. If I said anything more, it would just be me talking about my favorite parts, which we've already <laughs> done. So. <laughs> We probably can end this one here. It'll be a much shorter episode, but it doesn't need to be a long one for this. Yeah. Just go see it. If you haven't seen oh, it, yeah. go watch it. Yeah, definitely watch it. Most of the time, like, I'll be like, this isn't, like, I'll be like, I enjoyed it, but I understand if people don't like it. But honestly, I don't think, like, it really has to not be your thing if you are not going to at least enjoy it somewhat. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, everyone should give it a try at one point. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so much fun. And it's only 45 minutes, so it's not like you're going to dedicate an hour and a half of your time. Yeah. Don't watch Nutcracker from Realms. Just watch this movie the same length of time. And you yeah, just watch this one like three <laughs> times. Because the Nutcracker of the Four Realms was way longer than it needed to be. Yeah, like <laughs> if you watch Nutcracker of the Four Realms, you'll walk away sad and depressed <laughs> that you wasted your life. But if you watch this three times, you'll be like... Yay, good time spent, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they need to put out a soundtrack because I looked up the soundtrack because I was when I was trying to figure out which song was which from the from the actual ballet. Yeah, it's like I'll just look at the soundtrack. I could not find a soundtrack. Oh no! Like, D Disney is losing money here. They should be putting yeah, out a come soundtrack. Yeah, Disney. For this. I will. I will buy the soundtrack because <laughs> it is that good. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, I think that's going to be all for this one. Do you want to let people know where they can find you if they want more from you? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, could it, Can you handle more of me is the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me at KT Draws Things um, on Instagram and Twitter. I recently did some variant covers for a webcomic that you can uh, check out my posts of it on Twitter and Instagram. It's really cool. 
give it a look and yeah okay and you'll be back later because we're going to be talking about muppet christmas carol at the end of the season yeah so look forward to that imagine me but i'm waving my arms like kermit (laughs) (laughs) yes okay well we'll see you then yep look forward to it Thanks for listening to every version ever. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow my co-hosts as well, and if you want more content from us, check out one of the other podcasts in the iHeartMovies podcast network, or check out my brand new Patreon. My link tree, as well as any other relevant links, will be in the description. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.